Hey guys, this is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Got a video discussion here. Um, here at our shop, we train a lot of different classes. Of course, your, your basic open water, your advanced, your rescue, up to the dive master assistant instructor. We're an IDC facility, so we teach instructors here. Um, you know, we also teach a slew of specialties, just about any standardized specialties out there. Uh, your nitrox, deep diver, wreck diver, navigation, you know, it goes on and on and on, night diver. Uh, we do some very distinctive specialties, such as, say, dry suit, full face mask, um, side mount. Um, so there, there's many classes that we teach, and one of the biggest questions we get is, or biggest concerns that we get from students are, well, I really want to try this type of diving, and that's the word they use, is try. They don't necessarily say, I want to get certified in this, and this is the type of diver I want to be. It's, well, I want to try this type of diving, see if I like it, get certified in it, and then once I'm certified, if I like it, then I think I might want to buy the equipment that's suitable for that type of dive. And now there's an issue here. First of all, you need to make sure you have the proper equipment for the type of diving that you're going to be doing. But when we start talking about finances, not everybody can go out, buy their basic open water set, take the class, get certified. Then let's say they want to get in the side mount, they're going to buy their side mount set, take the class, get certified, side mount dive. Then they want to get in to say back mount doubles and do the technical thing or the DIR thing. So they're going to go out and they're going to buy all this gear. They're going to get a tutelage from an instructor. They're going to get trained how to use it. Then they're going to go dive. Most people, I'm going to say just about 99% of people is going to buy their initial dive gear. They're going to dive. They're going to get a lot of experience. And then they kind of want to get their foot wet in different areas of diving just to see what they want. But depending on the shop and the instructor, if that equipment is required to already be owned, say, by the student, it may turn that student off from taking dive courses from them in the future. Now, that kind of hurts the industry because the dive shop's not making money. It kind of hurts the student because they're not expanding their education. And most dive shops are not going to supply gear, if you will, after that initial open water class. We don't. Here at our shop, we will supply, we do a rental package for your BCD, regulator, tank, and weights for your initial open water class. Any class outside that, you're either going to pay another rental fee for it or you need to own your gear. And we we encourage you to own your own gear because it's safer, because it's your gear. You know you took good care of it. Um, it's reliable gear if you took good care of it. And of course, it's more comfortable gear because it's your gear and you have it adjusted to you. But when we talk about transitioning to new types of diving where there are specialized equipment out there for that diving, I'm going to show you a quick little way that you can transition without spending hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of dollars to transition in that type of diving with your pre-existing dive gear. So basically what I have here is a standard back inflate, back mounted recreational system. This is just a standard Mares Hybrid Pure BCD. Okay, it works great for travel. It's got a folding back plate. It is a back inflate system. so. Even all the way at the open water level, say if that diver has the intentions to one day going into a back plate wing, he's already training on, say, that back inflate system. He, he's not transitioning, say, from a, a jacket style straight into a back inflate or a back plate wing back inflate system and have to manipulate his gear or manipulate his buoyancy or anything like that. So this is a good model, and this is why I chose this model for this particular demonstration or this uh, video discussion. So basically, it's a standard back inflate system. Uh, it does have a plastic back plate versus the hard steel or aluminum back plate, but that's gonna help transition that diver in there. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is show you how I've transitioned this system at a very minimal cost into not a back mount system, but into a recreational side mount system. Now, one of the biggest problems with the Hybrid Pure, and this is my personal BC, I absolutely, love the hybrid pure i'm not going to say too much bad about it because this is what i use to teach all my open water divers in as well and it's what i personally use on a day in day out basis but with the hybrid pure one of the flaws to it is there's no d-rings on the waist strap so one of the modifications i did was simply added a d-ring i had took a, a steel d-ring a steel triglide added one there and i simply added one on the left waist strap and the cool thing about the hybrid pure it is a modular system so if i don't want the weight integrated weight pouches i simply detach them unslot or slide them off the waist strap 
and then I've got rid of them. I'm go, I can go back to a traditional weight belt if I wanted to. Plus, that allows me to mount these D-rings here on the back. So, I've already started that slow transition to add a bottle or go from back mount to side mount. Now, I can add a bottle to the side because even though I had a D-ring here, I needed to add a D-ring to my waist strap so that I can add that bottom. So that's one small modification that you can make to your gear, simply add D-rings where needed. Now I use that, that terminology careful, where needed, because when we talk about side mount systems, sometimes hooking to a D-ring up top, hooking to a D-ring on your waist strap is not necessarily that good of an idea because depending on the buoyancy characteristics of the tank that you're using, say in a side mount situation, or the system, whatever, and, and I use stage bottling kits, but depending on what you do for your side mount rig as far as how you attach your tank to your system, it may not be the best location. On this particular model, if you was to hook to a D-ring on your shoulder and hook to the D-ring on your waist, when you're in that horizontal position, instead of the tank being right here parallel with your body, that tank is actually going to be down below you uh, and it's, that can cause several things. It can be an entanglement hazard, it could get caught, it could drag in the bottom if you're close to the bottom. So we don't want that. I want to be able to transition that tank further on back, not necessarily here on a waist D-ring. Now, with aluminum tanks, one cool thing about the D-ring, if it's a tight enough system, you can hook up to a waist strap and then as the buoyancy characteristics change as you're using air you still need to be able to detach from that d-ring reach on back further somewhere on the, the bcd itself or on a waist strap or or wherever you're attaching your gear and hook up now in a standard side mount system we typically don't use d-rings as far as the waist d-rings we're going to use what's called a butt plate system and mares makes through their XR line, they make a soft butt plate system that is designed specifically for side mount diving. Now, the way it's attached to this BC, which I'm going to show you in a minute, was the modification that I had to actually make to make this system work. But once again, the reason I've done this was to show you, you can transition to a new type of diving at a very, very minimal cost just to see if you're going to like it. And then once you get into it, once you're certified, then you can start looking at buying a new dive rig for that diving. But a lot of us don't have the money that we can just go out, spend another several hundred dollars or several thousand dollars just to make that transition to where for say 50 to 75 bucks you can make a transition very easily with your pre-existing system. Now the way I have this one rigged, it's easy to attach and detach so if I don't need the side mount capabilities of it, I can very easily detach it and, and I've got my standard back mount system. So. With the new Mares XR line, they come out with a butt plate system that has these four grommets up top. Now, unfortunately, on the Hybrid Pure system, with it not being a standard back uh, plate, it's more of a plastic plate versus the hard steel or aluminum, and it's got these slots, I'm not sure if you can see them, but it's got these little slots here in the bottom of the back plate. Now, there's two slots that are not even used, and what these slots are for, that is so that your waist strap attaches to the back plate itself and vice versa, same thing up top for your, your shoulder straps. But the two slots that are not used are perfectly laid out, if you will, to be able to attach something. Now, the way they, they're designed is you've got a slot here where a webbing strap goes through, it creates a loop, and then it's got like a plastic dowel or a wooden dowel in it that locks it into place so that webbing doesn't slide back out. And so as long as you've got something to attach to the webbing, you can slide the webbing up that's got a loop in it, put you a little plastic dowel in or a plastic plug, and it's going to lock it into position. It's very easy to detach that system. You simply pull the plug out, webbing pops right out. So the way I had to modify this system, and I'll show you from this side, is I took a long piece of webbing here, and I simply popped me some grommet holes in it and was able to bolt the butt plate to that piece of webbing. Now I still needed to mount that webbing to the system itself. And the way I did that is I had a friend of mine who sews a lot of things take me two pieces of webbing and create a V in it, just like my fingers. And the bottom of the V is attached to that horizontal piece of webbing where the butt plate's attached via the bolt and grommet system. And then the top part of the V's up here where the top of my fingers are, he actually folded it over, creating a loop in the webbing itself. Sewed that together. Now, initially, I can slide those two pieces of webbing, slide the loops through the back plate system here 
to where it pokes through, put me a little plastic dowel rod in, and it locks that into place. Now, I've initially took a back inflate system or a traditional scuba system, back mounted system, and converted it at a very, very minimal cost into a beginner's side mount system. Okay, it does have a little place here for a crotch strap, so it holds that. It's not up here flopping around when you don't have tanks. And I've actually, in the past month or so, I've actually left this on at all times. I hadn't really detached it. Even when I transitioned back into the uh, back mount system, I just leave it on. It doesn't get in my way. And it's actually up underneath the wing. You can see the wing actually comes about halfway over the top of it. So it doesn't get in the way of anything. Even when I take my gear off, the tank I use is tall enough. It's not sitting here banging on the bottom or anything like that. Now there are some other modifications I did have to make to this. One of the problems we have with side mount diving is whatever bladder system you're going to use, in, in a traditional back mount, you kind of want that bladder to taco up around the tank. Well, in side mount diving, you don't want that. You want your bladder to kind of taco around you. So imagine taking a taco and flipping it upside down, and instead of the ingredients being your tank, the ingredients is your body. So we want that to be secure against us. Now, what I do, here on the side of the bladder system, there's these little plastic uh, sleeves. It's got your bungee that secures it in. All I do is simply take another bungee system down through the sleeve, and I'm gonna bungee to the extra slots here on the back plate itself. So it keeps that uh, bladder nice and tight against me. It doesn't allow the taco in. And then on my cam strap, all I do is simply remove it from the system altogether. Uh, it's just your basic back mount cam strap. You just unthread it, pull it out of the system. And once again, I've took a, just a, a regular recreational um, back mounted system, converted it to a side mount system, and I've come to find out leaving that butt plate on here, it works great for stage bottles, works good for pony bottles, because instead of hooking it, say, on a shoulder D-ring and a waist D-ring where that tank's going to hang down below me, I can hook to the shoulder D-ring, to the butt plate D-ring, and it keeps that tank perfectly horizontal with my body. It keeps it up underneath my arm so it's nice and protected and it's not hanging down creating an entanglement hazard or anything like that. So guys, this is one way that you can start out in trying a new type of diving at a very, very minimal cost before you go out and just buy hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of dollars worth of more gear. So definitely look at your pre-existing gear. When you go to take a class, sit down with your instructor one-on-one -on -one and discuss what gear you have, how it can be modified, of course, without violating warranty issues or anything like that, but how it can be modified to be used safely, make you feel more comfortable, because of course it's your gear, it's something you use all the time, and see if it can be used before you go out and buy a lot of gear. Now, once you've transitioned, once you've took the classes, once you've got certified, then you can start buying new different types of gear that you feel more comfortable with. But this is a great, very inexpensive way to actually transition into a new type of diving. Once again, I went from back mount diving into side mount diving and vice versa. And with this particular system that I have rigged, it's very simple to unbolt these grommets here, pop this system off, and it's not my, it's not changed the system. It's just a little addition that I had to add here just to, to mount the two together to where I can use the same system for multiple types of diving. And once again, it's not meant to replace anything, it's meant to help you transition into that new type of diving, just to see if you'd like it before you spend hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of dollars. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, concerns, complaints, or issues with this, please put it down in the comment section below. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this. Once again, I'm not trying to tell you that one super type of equipment is going to work for all type of diving out there because I understand that's not the case and most of us understand that's not the case but this is a good way to slowly make that transition at a very minimal cost just to see if you're going to like it before you go out and spend a ton of money. So guys I really appreciate you watching this video. If you got any comments or concerns please put it down in the comment section below. As always make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube and as always guys we appreciate your business.